Special Agents Podcast. Are you tired of having to log in to a hundred or maybe even a thousand different places? <laughs> having to go check all these different platforms for messaging to to managing your your SOI, to managing your database and having to zap all these systems together so they communicate to one another and it's just one big pain in the ass. Or do you follow, find yourself in the camp of you're not doing any of that because it's such a pain in the ass, but it would be really nice if there was a system that could fix all of that. Well, today's guest is going to discuss an issue, I guess I could call it a, a problem, uh, an annoyance that he had, which caused him to find a platform that allows him the opportunity to kind of have a one-stop shop for mm -hmm. everything, also saves him a ton of money. We're going to talk about that today. But first, let me introduce the guests, Mr. David Nelson. How are you, sir? You know what? Life is great. I'm on here with Jeff, so, you know... That's that Off says, my bucket says list. no one ever says no one ever. So, well, you know what? Someone's got to be the first. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, David, you are a real estate agent by trade based mm -hmm. out of the Twin Cities in Minnesota. And you have obviously found, you know, uh, I guess you could call it an additional path that you're now going down, but still selling real estate. So, let's start mm -hmm. with the most basic question that I ask every guest, which is tell us a little bit about yourself. What what kind of led you to real estate? What, how long you've been in the business and what led you to the, the whole go high level free up systems that you've built? So start from kind of the beginning. Sure. Well, I was born on a rainy Saturday. Um, uh, no. A good story. So, yeah, it's 50 years of this. So, so, so buckle up. <laughs> uh, so before real estate, I was a I was an occupational therapist. I got a master's degree from from med school. So I was uh, treating strokes and brain injuries for ten years, and uh, loved it. But I realized that you know there's that hard ceiling of of healthcare, and nobody ever saw me because they're healthy. So it was just really weighing down on me. And um, I had a taste of real estate back in 2009 when I got licensed. I was with my ex wife. Um, her mom her mom is still an agent, but she got me doing some open houses and things like that. And I got the taste of it. And then I realized that uh, I kind of have that serial entrepreneur blood line in my, in my body. So um, some healthcare effects took a, took place in 2013. I had to get out of it just because of my sanity. Uh, went full-time in 2013, been full-time since then, April 17th, 2007, 2013. And uh, yeah, I ran a, I ran a team for 10 years. This is the first year now since 2014. I haven't had a team. It's kind of refreshing. And uh, then over the years, I'm, I'm kind of a techie nerd. And I didn't realize that, you know, I had that in me, but I always knew there was a better way. You know, I love watching Shark Tank. I love the build a better mousetrap. And I just found myself spending a lot of money on things that I only use snippets of, but you're paying full price. Like I've been a ClickFunnels user for years. And it just got so expensive for what I got. And so I started doing some research and then I started, um, you know, found some great things to add into. And that's what I kind of created free up is it adds in the website, build the landing page, CRM, social media, all those cool things in one spot that I just log in. And I loved it so much that I just use it myself. And it took about six months until other agents were seeing this and they were like asking me questions about it. And, I run at monthly events for real estate agents. So they just saw the marketing and the, the lead follow-up, all that stuff. And so they started asking questions and, you know, I peeled back the onion, showed, showed the inside of it and agents wanted a piece of it. So that's how my business sites kind of developed a free up. Amazing. Uh, so you have now been in real estate. So what you're going on your 11th year, is that correct? Or are you yeah. in your 11th year? In my 11th year, full-time. Yep. Okay. Awesome. And, and kind of what does that journey look like for you on the real estate path? Uh, you, you mentioned that you ran a team. I assume you didn't just get right into the business and start running a team. So what did that, what does that path kind of look like as far as the real estate career? Uh, you know, I mean, since I was in healthcare, I just, I like helping people and I always feel like, you know, it's okay to bring people up and I want to do that. 
So it took me about a year full time in real estate. I realized that there's a lot of things I could, a lot of gaps I can fill in. And I just haphazardly formed a team, um, really half assed it. I tell you, it was <laughs> started off really bad. But that being said, I, I grew from it. And then it got to the point where I realized, you know, helping others is a, is a strong passion of mine. But now with the market the way it is, the economy and everything else, agents are kind of pulling back their dollars. They want to hold on to their money. So it was tough running a team because you're always trying to overvalue yourself, but not take as much on commissions. And I realized like, well, you know what, if I just create systems and if I can be available as a, as a mentor, as a coach to help other people, I'm still getting my internal gratification of that. But also I'm not financially tied to people. Like I have to give them leads or they have to give me 10, 15, 20% commission off their sales. And actually that relationship has been phenomenal. Um, you know, it's been really, really good, but you know, I've been through a lot of markets, you know, and I just say the biggest thing is you stay consistent. Um, from being in Minnesota, I, I would always look at the coasts. What are the East and West coast doing I learn from them? And then I bring it here because Minnesota, you know, it's not the most social hub of the world, but that being said, I find things outside of the area and bring them here and then put my spin on it. Huge star Wars fan. So I try to put some of that nerdy star Wars into it and just make it my own. And then you put the systems behind it for the follow-up for the Legion and everything else that works because I, again, I like to work smarter, not harder. While I'm talking to you on this amazing podcast, there's business happening. Systems are my thing. Systems. That's awesome. So what is the, what is your MO for business? Is it, is it been, you know, is it SOI? Is it, is it networking events? Is it, is it a certain type of marketing? Is it buying leads? What has been your MO that allowed you or helped you grow your business? Um, for the real estate side or for yeah, real estate yeah. side. Yeah. Um, I started off geographic farming. It, that was the key. The neighbor across the house from across the street from me had the for sale sign up and I'd been an agent for, for a couple of years and it was with somebody else and it pissed me off. And that kind of forced me to like, Hey, I got to reevaluate and, and start focusing on because Minneapolis area, there's three plus million people in this, in this area. And my dollar doesn't go across that many people. So if I could be hyper local and I grew my business on that, um, this is back in the days when you could drop a pin in a house on Facebook and market for only a half mile around it. Fantastic. So I geo farmed and then I farmed an area of 100 and then I got to like 2000. And, you know, any given year, just my farm area, I would pull in 70 to $80,000 of gross commissions just in that farm. Um, so I got to the point where I was rarely driving places. If I was, it was a couple miles away. And then from that point, you know, then the name starts to spread and, and the clients maybe move to a different city and I've been in the business long enough or they may sell again or, you know, they get divorced and that happens, but it's all been relationship building. Um, I don't, I, I paid leads for the team, but I didn't really take leads myself. So it was all organic, get in front of people. People are the biggest, you know, industry we have. So just, that's the best asset. Just get to know people and it's, it's been great. Yeah. So let's talk about the geo farming for a second, because yeah. when you talk about geo farming, actually my first thought was like a postcard strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you're telling me it was a digital geo farming strategy. And, and so that's broad. Uh, we get it, drop a pen, mm -hmm. market around a certain radius, maybe choose some very specific keywords back when, when you could get away with that. And what did that look like? What uh, what type of marketing or digital marketing? What kind of ads were you pumping out? Video graphics? What mm -hmm. was what was really moving the needle? So it was a mixture of, of um, digital and print because I think you know okay. print is still around. People like print, mm -hmm. and I was using SmartZip back then. And um, back then you could actually SmartZip was exclusive to certain areas. So once I got that area, it was mine. But for the digital side, what I would do is I'd drop a pin and maybe just do a market update just for that just for that area. And I wouldn't say, here's your market update. I would say, here's your kindred circle market update. Do you live in kindred circle? So I'd use keywords that would, as a reader living in that area, would say, oh, yeah, I live in kindred circle. So then that link would drive them back to my CRM, my website. And then they would start maybe looking at houses or I would use, I create landing pages, like what's happening in, in, La in Lakeville. Um, I created a Facebook page. We love Lakeville. That's the city that I lived in. So a lot of it was just really targeting the people, but using the words, but you have to put out content. And this is back in the day when 
you know, social media was there, not huge. So it was my goal is to provide them with it. What's what's happening in the cities? What's going on? New new restaurant, trying to be that hub where people would come to me, even if they weren't looking to buy a house, they were like, oh, you know, he he's he's, he's he knows what's going on with the what's what's happening in the city. He knows some good vendors, whatever it is. And I just built that around it. And mm-hmm. um, then with the the print marketing, you would whenever I would get a ho- you know, house for sale, I had a really good marketing strategy for that. My open houses, I always do an hour before just for the neighbors. I mean, people love that. I mean, I'm, I'm a Costco member. It's pretty exclusive. So lo- people love being exclusive. And it just, after a while, people get to know you and they see you multiple times. They see your face on postcards on the panel. Maybe they had some digital ads on Facebook, whatever it was. Then you would just kind of become that, that go-to person. They, people would say like, I'd be stupid not to call you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I didn't say that to them, but they just kind of learned it. But it took it took a time. You know, it's geofarming is a, is a is a long play, just like regular farming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I'm a massive fan of it, and I'm living, yep. breathing it with the Lake of the Ozarks, and and I can't stress that strategy enough. It's to me, it's the absolute lowest hanging fruit, just because of the way the algorithms have now advanced, especially mm-hmm. as digitally. Uh, it's the only, it's the best way to, to pretty much guarantee, but also train the algorithm, how to show it to the right people. And then when you use it in conjunction with mailers, with voicemail drops, with open houses, with just being out in the community, it all comes back together and you can't understate the value and the perception from a consumer to the person they see the most. And when that person they see the most is ha- has that digital presence that allows you to display authenticity, it makes them mm-hmm. feel closer to you. And anybody listening to this, like I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but I wanna stress it. And and it's, it's so incredibly powerful. Actually, I didn't really know that about you. I didn't know you've done that. You and I have had many conversations. I, and- I wrote a book, it's actually on Amazon. Oh shit. On Geofarming. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, and also too, is like, I, I've met people that I've looked up to where I've sought and seen the public eye and you meet them and they're total, not what you expected them to be. You were going to say oh, something, you were going to say something bad word. Yeah, you? it was. It starts with an A and ends with holes. <laughs> but, but then, you know, so my, all of whatever I've done forever is just like, be, be me. Mm-hmm. So if I'm that person on social media and they meet me in person, I want that same person. And it's not an act. It's just, it, it actually makes it easier. I'm not pretending yeah. to be anybody. And they see that genuine innocent, you know, in me, like I love wearing, you know, like funny shirts that are real estate based. I go to the gym, wear this shirt, it's just conversational and it's just really approachable. I don't, yeah. you're not stuffy. So yeah, the geo farming, it's just, it, and I would call it a high hanging fruit. Only reason is, is very few people will take the ladder to go up and take that fruit. Yeah. Good point. The low hanging fruit of the, I'm going to pay Zillow a thousand dollars every minute to give me shitty leads. Whereas the high hanging fruit, you're going to go up and very few people, again, will take that effort. Yeah. But the fruit up there is so much better. You have less competition. That is what geo farming is to us. And and you get it. It's, it's the real deal. I love it. I can talk I all day it. on that. Yeah, same, same. But I want to, but mm-hmm. I, but I think it's important, first of all, to establish that. It's, I always like talking to people that are in the trenches uh, because, mm-hmm. you know, agents need to hear from somebody who, uh, you know, literally are living it and breathing it. And what would you do if the sky fell tomorrow and the, Zillow didn't exist or certain things didn't exist? Right. You'd, you'd lean back on that. Like if I asked you, you could only do one thing in your business. I, I'm pretty sure that's what you would lean into. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, I think it's important to share that. Now th- that then I assume had some impact on leading you down the techie path, which was, okay, how do I bring the systems together? How do I make this better? How do I make this more efficient? So kind of, how did that all come about? Um, not to brag, but I was using QR codes before COVID, you know, this is back. That's, when had, that is a big deal. Yeah. You had to be, yeah, you actually had to download a QR code reader. That's how old this thing, but I saw the value and, and, and truth be told, QR codes have been around since 1996 in japan so they it's an old technology but i love that because when you send a postcard you people put hey you know go to this link it's hdp da, 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 da. no one's going to go there but a qr code they zap it 
Yeah. So all of my print marketing is I have QR code on. Love it because it takes them back to where I want to go to. So that so I'm doing like a um, just listed or coming soon postcard from a geo farm area. Scan this QR code to see what it looks like. The conversion rate is fantastic because again you're teasing their you know their curiosity, doing that you know and or if I'm going to say hey come to this event so then free up I'll create an, an event where they can they register to come so I know they're coming, but then I also get their email. That's gold. So then, you know, scan the QR code to, to register for the exclusive client only open house held on this day. So I'm constantly gathering uh, emails. To me, emails are gold because then I can send out my market snapshots. I can set up, put them on HomeBot, love HomeBot. All these things where it maximizes my ability to reach. And then, because phone numbers, you can kind of get pretty easily, but emails are tough. And then, yeah. and then I try to do, you know, I farm where I live. Because to me, it's like free marketing. We'll walk our dogs. I'm wearing, you know, a swag shirt. Or if I'm out after an open house, maybe I'll leave my open house sign sitting up against the house an extra hour when I get home. There's just things that you're putting out there. And then you start walking around and people start seeing you. It's just so easy, in my opinion, to be visible. But it takes work. It takes time. I love that. And so what is that so what does now that look like so that now took you from seeking out a go high level where did mm -hmm. you come from pre go high level like what type of systems what were the you know your thousands of places that you had to go uh prior to finding go high level sure well it was click funnels i was using mailchimp for my reverse prospecting and my email lists um, Eventbrite, which I'm not a huge fan of, Facebook events, um, Calendly. Jeez, I wish I could list them up. There was just so many I was paying, you know, you're in a nickel and diming you. Yeah, you know, maybe it's five five bucks a month. Maybe it's like 300, like click files. Yeah. yeah. It just starts adding up, adding up. Did you and, mention a did you mention a CRM? Um, so I've been using like Chime or Lofty for okay. my real my real estate CRM, but that wasn't really good for clients, in my opinion. So if someone's just looking, actively looking for houses, I'll drive them there because it has the IDX, they can search. It's a set it and forget it. They got great campaigns. But what I'm doing is like with my clients is I have workflows dedicated to their birthday, to anniversaries, to the, the home anniversary, to, I just have things going all the time. And then the branding is consistent across the board. So the problem with ClickFunnels to MailChimp, the branding was always different or click funnels to let's say eventbrite you couldn't have the same so this is all consistent branding and then for and i created like my farm right now i have a landing page that's just for my farm area so people can scan it they can see um houses for sale in there some new events going on so it's just dedicated to that mm -hmm. so again i'm giving them what they want without vomiting down their throat i'm a real estate agent i'm not oh. selling them and and i every, every real estate agent should know this I don't go after those that are actively buying or selling right now because there's so many other agents doing that. I go after the people that haven't thought about it yet. So geo farming is great because I'm planting the seed of I'm here when you need me, but until then, here's an event I'm hosting. Here's some, here's some information on social media, whatever it is. Um, you get them before anybody else has a chance. In and other I words, no commission breath. Oh my God. I hate commission breath. Mm -hmm. That's that's key. That's key. It's, okay. And, and I'm a big fan of the, of the ninja selling system too. You know, there's just a lot of things where you're really client focused over that, you know, just if I'm going to charge X percent, X percent, I'm going to give double that in value, yeah. whatever it is. It's a good attitude to have. Not, yeah. not, not what's the fastest way to a commission check. Right. And that's a problem too, is like with this whole NAR settlement, it's making people realize that just because you graduate from, from, from real estate school, who says you're worth the 3%? Yeah. You know, you've done a deal yet. Are you worth yeah. 3%? Yeah. It's like, okay. So then you start to, but if you come in and you're like, here's my listing packet, here's my buyer packet, here's the things I offer. Here's my vendor list. Here's my website. That's already snazzed up. You know um, they're going to see the value and they're not going to ask you to reduce your commission. Yeah. I mean, when's the last time a Rolls Royce was on sale? Yeah. You know, you go pay for it because you know what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So you took uh, these systems and have effectively consolidated them. 
Yeah. Break that down. So it, the, the foundation is go, is go high level. Um, then on top of that, I've built on everything that ran my, that's running my business now. So um, I have multiple websites that people can go to. Like we have a certified pre-owned home program. That's how that's, that's um, housed or hosted on there. Um, I've got landing pages for any, every event that I run. I have landing pages. And the cool thing is, is they're all integrated with a workflow. So if I'm running an event and Jeff signs up for the event, automatically it goes into a workflow. I get notified. Jeff gets a welcome email, maybe a welcome text, maybe a video from me. And then there's that constant follow-up because my goal is I don't want Jeff to forget to come to an event. Um, so I brought all those together because, again, who wants to run an event and no one shows up? Mm -hmm. you know? And then with the CRM, I was like, well, I need a better way to stay in touch with my clients. And I don't use the word past clients because they're all my clients, but also not just my clients, but my, my vendors, my sphere of influence. So then I'm like, I'm going to create something where I can put everyone in, in. But again, the branding stays the same. I can shuttle them across certain stuff. If I want to invite them to an event, it's just a couple of clicks and they're in it. Um, it just saves me time from downloading CSV files and uploading over to Eventbrite and da, da, da. Now, and uh, the time it saves me is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I log into that and that's really all I log into. Now let's let's be for those of you that aren't familiar with Go High Level. Let me be very clear: it is a very robust system. If you struggle with the basic of technologies, then you trying to just go in and be like, "I'm going to go do this Go High Level." Good luck. And I know. <laughs> so, so, what would you say to that to someone who is, uh, you know, that that might be thinking to themselves, oh, "I'm going to go jump into Go sure. High Level." What, what would what would be your response to that? Well, I would say, great, go look into it. You're going to get overwhelmed. Um, I'm a techie. And at points, I was like, wow, this is there's, this is a lot going on here. Um, but I would say, check them out. But then let's talk. Because I'm, I'm sharing as caring is my motto. Uh, I, I just, so everything I've created, I think there's like 40 some workflows and web, we, websites, all that stuff. I just share it with, with the agents. So if Jeff signs up in the system and he wants to run an event, I'm like, hey, Jeff, here's the landing page. Here's all of the email templates and here's the workflows. You just got to personalize it. I mean, and if you have an assistant that can, that can, they can get that done in minutes. Yeah. So everything I've created, I, I give. And then also, you know, for probably for a limited time until I get too busy, I'm also available to help out because, mm -hmm. again, I know the system inside and out and I just see the immense value to it that I will go on one-on-ones with people and chat for like 30 minutes and kind of walk things through. But I created a um, YouTube tutorial channel on there. So people can go on, look at, look at things that, you know, maybe they have questions with, but um, I've really, I've realized that average real estate agent is about seven years behind in technology. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, how can I bring that up? Cause technology isn't going anywhere. AI isn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So as long as people keep on saying it's going to go away, it's not. So either you adapt or get out. Yeah. So my job is like, I've adapted it for real estate agents. I know technology is hard for them. So there's a lot of things in go, go high level that they don't need. But in the systems, like I'm going to show you the, the, the probably the three to four main things that you need that'll take your business to the next level. And I'm going to give you all the tools to do it. You just got to personalize it. Take off my mugshot, put your mugshot. Take off my logo, put your logo, whatever it is. So, so in other words, you've created the system which is now called free up systems Correct. inside of go high level that is built for a real estate agent. So they don't have to do that. Correct. Now and, give me good. No, no. I was going to say sometimes people will sell like bits and pieces of things they've created, but when it's all said and done, you know, you're just buying bits and pieces of these and it, they don't really work well. And it's, it's like, here's like everything I have is synced to each other that it's like, here, here you go, here you go. And I'll show you how to set it up. Yeah. I mean, my, my events have gone from like very few people showing up to, and that was because I was a really poor job at following up and reminding people to now is either there, it's a 90% attendance rate or 90% of the people have told me they can't, you know, have come or told me they can't come Yeah. before, you know, agents are flaky yeah. before agents would just not show up because it's yeah. too sunny outside or what they saw a Robin, you know, whatever. And it's, it's just made my life easier. And it's, again, it works behind the scenes. Give me an example. Give me, give me three examples uh, of what you see that 
a real estate agent has come to you or you brought this to them and it's been an effective lifesaver? Sure. Well, first off, the events, because, um, you know, like I said, to a lot of people are running events, home buyer seminars, whatever it is. And the frustration was, is people would give up because they feel like the events suck. And usually the marketing that sucks or, or the, or the tagline that sucks. So now they create so things. So it's the, it's the communication of getting it effectively out there is what actually sucks. Yeah. Or they, they, they pump out an event bright or a Facebook event and it looks the same as everything else. And it's, there's, there's no draw. Whereas free up, you can create a landing page and have videos and you have downloads, whatever you want. It's just visually stunning. And then you have the form right there and you can put whatever questions you want on the form for them to sign up on. So a lot of people will have like a, a home buyer seminar. And then like the question will be, you know, have you bought a house before? Um, how long, you know, do you currently rent or buy? But they don't ask, are you pre-approved? Are you working with an agent? Because that just scares people. But they're just gathering information. And the cool thing is, is all that information gets pulled into their CRM too when they fill out the forms. So you get all that information. So events is huge. Um, well, so before you go, before you go to number two, yeah. let's talk about events for a second. So what does that look like? Because you kind of glossed over, well, you can have videos <laughs> and you can have this and you can have that. So what is the, what would, how about this? What is a great example of something you've set up that created a successful event? So every year our, um, I host a, uh, it's a family a holiday photo shoot for my clients. So previous years I had to use Calendly and try to block up times and I use ClickFunnels to create a, well, this year I just created a nice looking landing page. Well, all the information was there. And then it's, this system syncs with my, G, with my Google calendar. So then what I did is I put, I broke down the, ca the calendar on there where my clients could pick a time they wanted to sign up on. And then, so they picked their time. And as soon as they hit submit, they get an email and a text stating, thank you for signing up. Here's your time because it pulls it from their form. And then leading up to the event, they get reminders. Hey, see you tomorrow at such and such time. Make sure you come early. We have mimosas. Um, I'll have a video 24 hours before. I'll have a video that goes out to them all automated. And when people show up, you know, they're, they're just excited because I've built up that hype. Um, and this event, is, it gets, it's, it was sold out within three mm. hours we had yeah and that's free it's free to my clients but the, the marketing and everything else was very attractive for them and it was you have to make it easy so if you're drawing people to go to multiple places to sign up they're not going to but if the form is right on that landing page and they just pick a time put their email phone number in and name boom done wow and and so and and how do how does it distribute what do you mean sorry how did how did you distribute to make it to where it was so successful and got in front of so many people? So um, the easiest one, of course, my client email list, I, I would send it out. And as, so, as an email, okay. As an email. Um, this, this is another cool part about free up is I have a initial invite workflow that I also give out that it, it goes, did, did Jeff open the email? Yes or no? No. Okay. Wait two days, resend the email. Did Jeff open it? Yes or no? No. Resend the email. And, it, and it's a constant going through. So they're, they're getting that email from me. And I, it could be text too, but email. And if it, oh, he opened it, great. Did, did Jeff click the registration link? No, yes, no. He's going to get it again. It's just that whole making sure people show up. So that was automated. And then, of course, in social media, you create, I go on Canva, create little, little fun videos. You send them out, you maybe tag some people. Um, the same thing is I had other agents asking me, how do you do that? What's going, what's your marketing? So, you know, the second effect was I was just getting questions from real estate agents and, or other people that didn't use me as a client, as an agent are like, how come my agent doesn't do this? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. Cool. I lot of social media and just, and I'm building like my, e, I'm building a massive list. It's, you know, there you go. Got it. Well, okay. So the events, events, number one, what's, mm -hmm. what's two. Um, your online presence. And I'm not talking about TikTok or Twitter or any of that stuff, or X, excuse me. It's your Google pre presence. So this system is actually integrated with Yext. So what it does is um, I get about three to four free deals every year from people finding me on Google. So figure that out, you know, percentage wise, that pays for a lot of stuff. I and imagine. yep, but there's, there's a method to the madness. So when you do this, you have to have your right name on there. There's all these things. But the cool thing with the system is when you put it in, 
it pushes it out to 200 other websites that Google looks at for the rankings and then make sure your information is accurate across all the, all the platforms. So hmm. I, I, I can run online. Because, because of, not because of go high level, because of the Yext. Yep, the integration of Yext. Yep, and that's also in the dashboard too. I'm not going anywhere. It's all in the free up dashboard. You're not going anywhere else. It's super easy. Wow. And so I can pull up anyone's business and say, hey, I'll do an online business review for you. Let's see where you're at. The average agent is 9% accurate across the internet. Wow. 9%. That's not good. That's terrible. Um, it is terrible. Yeah. And the, the people say, well, my Google looks good. I'm like, great, but you're not on Yelp. You're not on MapQuest. That, they're, they're even still around. I mean, you have to be on all these websites and p- agents, we all know, will never go on every website and update it consistently where well, this system does it for you. So wow. boom, I do it once, pushes it out. If I move and get a different phone number, update my phone number once, boom, within 30 minutes, gets pushed out to every other website. So I'm constantly staying up in the rankings organically, not by paying. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That, that's awesome. So is, 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 I mean, a Google presence in and of itself is, is like a mystery and, and, you know, how to, 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 to show up other than maybe blogging, right. Mm-hmm. Which who's doing that. Um, and so, when you say it helps you improve that presence, right? Is it, how complicated is the back end setting all of this up? Um, maybe like five minutes of work. Wow. So, and, and again, I, and I can help people too. I can show them it's like, I'm, you know, at least in Minnesota, you don't have to have your brokerage name and your Google business name. So I was told this for years, but it's mostly the ploy for the broker to, to promote themselves. So then I ran a team. So then was, and then I called it the Imperial Home Team. I'm like, well, nobody searches the Imperial Home Team. Then I put my name down and living in Minnesota with David Nelson. Good God, there's a billion. So no one, nobody, you know, Googles that. So then you're like, you have to find keywords. So right now mine is David Nelson hyphen realtor Bloomington comma MN. That's my, ta- that's my business mm-hmm. name. Mm-hmm. So now when people are searching, they're going to search like, I'm looking for a realtor in Bloomington, Minnesota, where I live. That's how they find me. So I encourage people not to have their name and their brokerage because really you, it's kind of a, it's not helping you, but have a name with the city that you want to market or city you live in and have realtor keywords. And then also, and then incorporate it into my bio, put the keywords in the bio, everything else. Um, just think of the words that people are going to search and put them in there. Use chat GPT to regurgitate it for you. Yeah. Ain't that the truth, man? I mean, most underutilized AI platform currently in today's world. Oh my God. It's magic. It's yeah. I think people are too caught up in all of the options that exist out there and and it's, it it just becomes too diluted. It is. And and some people, what I've heard too, is like, ah, it's, it's not me. It's too, it's not, it's, it's not personal. I'm like, well, you can tell ChatGPT, make it more engaging, make it more yeah. conversational, make well, it you, more. You can also whatever. use it as your baseline and yeah. then and then make it authentic. 100%, 100%. But again, you know, some people said the, you know, the internet's going to take over real estate. Then it was Zillow was going to take over real estate. Now it's like AI is going to take, I'm like, no, just do your job. And, but you have to learn the systems, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, it will take over your job if you let it. It will take over oh, your yeah. job if you don't get far more active uh, in terms of utilizing it because it's the agent that that it's the it's the it's the business that that uses AI that will replace the agent or the business that doesn't. Not the right. AI necessarily replacing the human. All right, that's number two. What's the third one? Um, the third one I would, and this, this is where I kind of push, is to have landing pages. So, you know, like I have a seller's guide, I have a buyer's guide. I have people can download my book for free on how to you maximize your house for selling. Um, landing page for like in for my, my farm area. So I'm doing the things that other people aren't doing, or at least I don't, I don't know. And then you're just offering up, put me, put it on social media, put it in your, you know, put it in your um, marketing and your post on your open houses, everything, whatever, whatever it is. And I drive people to these landing pages because it's engaging. It's giving them the information they want. Again, I go back to the model. Yes, I will take someone looking to actively buy or sell right now. 
But my business model is like, I'm building the foundation up where it does, when they're ready to buy, they don't care about anybody else. You know, get in front of them first, get in front of them first, show the value. When I show up for the listing appointment or buyer consult, they're not going to question in anything. They're just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been watching you. You know what you're doing. And yeah. you like Star Wars. So do I. Let's get married. <laughs> let's get married. That's funny. <laughs> So let's, you know, I, I obviously we could probably talk about this for, for hours or days. Um, what as as an agent who is listening to this and maybe just thinking to themselves, man, this sounds pretty amazing. Uh, how labor intensive is it by employing free up systems? Um, well, there's just like anything, there's going to be some front loading. So if you're an agent that's just going to expect to pay for something and that, and that is just going to kick you money, uh, don't, don't do it. I mean, but this being said, if you put some time up front and that that's including modifying my email templates, get, you know, it that does take some time, but once that's done, you, you, you have it done forever. Yeah. And then it's just adding clients into it. But I, I tell people the first two weeks are so important because if you just kind of put it in the back burner, you're just going to lose interest in it. Yeah. And coming from firsthand examples, it's been it's changed my business. Yeah. Um, I can, I can give referrals of people, title companies, mortgage, you know, real estate agents. Like, yeah, we, I do this and it's so much better. It's all in one place. It's crazy how many real estate agents are using Excel spreadsheet hmm. and yeah. Excel spreadsheet does not send out wonderful, you know, workflows, birthday reminders, things like that. It doesn't do any of that. It just tells you. Yeah. This is, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, we're getting to the a point a really, to me, a kind of a critical point in our the history of our country, our world, where it's like you're you're literally watching the shift happen, mm -hmm. and and it's not technology is not new, uh, now social media is not new, AI is relatively new, mm -hmm. and before you blink an eye, it's going to be VR conversations or right. something like that, and I mean I I think that you know, you know this I preach it about social I think you would eat you know, happily or, or agree that you would preach this about just technology in general. And, and as you mentioned, it's, it's, it's not like not embracing these things will necessarily put you out of business, but it's going to create a drastic disadvantage, mm -hmm. uh, a disadvantage in time, a disadvantage on reach, uh, a disadvantage in so many different ways, uh, lacking authenticity uh, tr from traditional marketing to, to social media marketing. And, and, and so it's like, what I tell people is like, unless you've got a foot out the door towards retirement, <laughs> you're going to have to figure this out. Like if you got a foot out the door, that's okay. Then don't worry about it. Just kind of drift into the sunset. That's what's going to happen to your business. And if you don't have a foot out the door, same thing's going to happen. You're going mm -hmm. to drift or you're going to have to work 10 X harder uh, for the same result that somebody has a lot of these systems built in, or uh, they've committed to a social presence that presents them a lot more reach yeah. and a lot more opportunities. And so, you know, where does an agent go from here? If somebody was like, man, I need to learn more about this. Uh, how can I do so? Um, if you want a, the general overview, um, go to freeupsystems.com. Um, and actually on there, you can block a demo with me. Um, you'll see my face on Zoom. So we can do a one-on-one -on -one demo. Um, also, if you just want to e email me, david at imperialhometeam.com. Yes, it's the Darth Vader's troops, imperialhometeam.com. I um, love to offer up. And again, too, it's like, I don't expect anything in return because I, I'm a firm believer that what you put out, you get back. So since day one in real estate, I've been helping people without any expectations and, and it's blessed my life. Um, one thing I have realized that, you know, you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. So with systems like this, it's allowed me more time that I feel that I've probably don't deserve, but this is fantastic. My wife and I go on traveling and I know free up is working behind the scenes. I don't have to worry about it. There's things happening. And as agents, we're so focused on let's make more money, but you're taking away time from your family. Imagine doing both, yeah. make more money, but you have more time with your family. Yeah. Well, and, and as I, I mean, first of all, the first thing that came to mind when you said that was uh, that's what Warren Buffett always says, you know, yeah. it's like, like make that money work for you. And this is kind of a, a similar concept, but just going to the free up systems that I'm on the specific, uh, you know, the realtor page, it's, it's freeupsystems.com. Mine says forward slash realtor. Yeah. Um, 
And I and I've even got a debt. But is that it? Just realtors after the free up systems? Yes. Yeah. And if you, and if you go to the main page too, I mean, you can look under industries, and I've kind of listed out the industries that I've that I've been helping. Got but it. the the meat and the potatoes are, are real estate. I mean, that's what I've been doing for a long time. That's where I see the gaps I want to fill. So you know, head there, book a demo. Love to show you. You know, you can reach out to Jeff too. I mean, he's got whatever it is. Like I just want to help people, but. Um, I'm always willing to show you behind the curtain. Yeah. Well, it, a lot of this thing, the things that we're talking about, and a lot of this is all very well spelled out on the website, talks about what it replaces, shows you a chart, uh, you know, and really can show you the potential savings that you could incur mm -hmm. uh, just by, by, by utilizing this. But I mean, when you think about things like funnels, like that is kind of a foreign word. It's mm -hmm. like a, it's like Chinese to most of us. And you think of Russell Brunson, you think yeah. of super expensive and complicated. I've now, you know, you know this, I'm living in the go high level world and it's, it's incredible. It's mm -hmm. incredible, incredibly amazing how relatively easy it is. And, and let me ask you this last question. So if I'm an agent, not tech savvy, uh, I know I need it, but man, good luck getting me to actually figure this stuff out. Mm -hmm. How, who supports me in doing all this stuff? So I'm not going to be there hand holding people, but we have, you know, there's the, there's actually the onboarding systems. And the cool thing is if it's just a general high, go high level question, go to YouTube and there's a bazillion, bazillion different videos out there. Um, that being said, there's, there's a lower plan that just got the basic, the CRM, some of the workflows, the pipelines, you can move your clients through. Um, a lot of people start there. I bet you the majority of my clients start there and they, and they kind of get comfortable with it. And they realize like, oh, this is not that bad, you know, it, but agents will step over a dollar to pick up a dime. You know, like this, just downloading their CSV file seems over, seems daunting, but nice. once this gets going and they realize like, oh, this is actually pretty simple. And then they'll probably bump up to the to the net higher plan to add in more of the stuff. But a lot of the, the you know, for just the, the agent that wants to streamline their system and have things working, the you know, forty nine dollars a month. I mean, geez, that's that's nothing. not much these days. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing. And and you can test it out for free for two weeks. Yep. And and um, I mean, really, all of your price points are very affordable, comparative to what a lot of agents are paying. I I encourage anybody listening to this who's made it this long to go check this out. Go to freeupsystems.com. Uh, make sure you choose the right industry. So it doesn't matter. Like this isn't just for real estate. This right. is literally for any industry. I mean, you're you're mm -hmm. dealing with a a, a lot of uh, blue collar industries. Correct. Um, and and just a variety: chiropractors, doctors. And, Landscapers, electricians are great yeah. at what they do for a living, but they suck at the technology. System. This takes place yeah. for them. Yeah, that's that's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, and David, there's an, so, and, there's, and there's an affiliate program too. That's because again, we're, we're, now we're taking it so far, it's going to go overhead. We got to get people into the platform. Yeah. Program. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, dangle but, that but, but if there time. are, but if there is, I guess that's a good. It's a good point. I mean, if you're a if you're somebody who has influence or you're a leader of any sort, there is that option as well. And, and they should reach out to you, which is a great segue to uh, obviously they know how to learn more about free up, but how do they connect directly with you besides potentially scheduling a demo? Yeah. Well, I, you can follow me on, um, I'm not on TikTok because I'm going to be 50 in August and I just don't want to be on TikTok right now, but if you have nothing go, to do with age, I know I actually, I would have fun on TikTok. Not going to lie. That, I just, that's probably the problem. You'd have too much fun. And that's time. that's my, what my wife says. So I, I gotta, I gotta pace myself. Um, but if you go, you can find me on Instagram. I'm very active on Instagram. It's David Nelson, realtor MN. That's my whole. So if you find me there and then I'm also on, on Facebook as well. So David Nelson, you can find me, you know, Minnesota. Awesome. And uh, if LinkedIn, you want to, all that fun stuff, if you want to follow uh, free up systems, you can do that as well. Uh, you have an yep. Instagram page called free up systems, a Facebook group called free up systems. Correct. correct. Yep. And that's, those two are just solely dedicated to free up. So if you want to just, I would recommend just hopping on there because there's constantly content being posted on the benefits, how to use it, how to maximize it. And if you're anything like me, we go to a thousand different real estate events and they say the same thing but all of a sudden it's a thousandth time that triggers you and it maybe clicks. That's what these sites are for. They just put up the information all of a sudden you're like, Oh my God, yes, I'm ready for that right now. Yeah. So yeah, be, follow. 
I love it, man. Um, this is it's it's robust, and that's why people like you are in our world because uh, you know people like me couldn't get into a go high level and, and effectively navigate it, and I would need somebody like you to hold my hand and guide mm -hmm. me and uh, get it set up. And as you mentioned, that's that's where the pain is. But once that pain's set up, then the automation kicks in, and before you know it, it's uh, it's firing on all cylinders and creating yep. opportunities, right? Yep. Once, once you do one thing, you just duplicate it. And that's that's the great thing about it. So you're not reinventing the wheel every time. It's just set it, duplicate it. There you go. I mean. Yeah. What's the uh, what's your best piece of advice for someone? If uh, if they're listening to this, watching this, uh, what is what is one piece of advice you'd give to somebody from this uh, kind of a parting thoughts? Um, I would say, what is the most important thing in your life? You know, if it's, is it money, family, time, whatever it is. And make sure you do what you do that's going to move the needle that direction. So if, it, if it's buying a retirement home in Boca Raton, Florida, make sure what you're doing moves that needle closer. Us as agents, we see shiny spoons, we see squirrels, we get too distracted. Um, have a goal, focus on it, and make sure you do things that are going to move the needle towards that direction. I love it. I love it. Go connect with David uh, on any of the places that he mentioned on mm -hmm. social. Um, and, you know, I, I encourage real estate professionals of all walks of life uh, to absolutely go to go check this out, because uh, we are in a time where, you know, again, we're uh, evolving. Uh, and, and not only are we evolving, it's been a challenging couple of years mm -hmm. and budgets are tight. And, you know, we really didn't put enough emphasis on that. But that really this is an opportunity for you to not only get more efficient, proficient, all the things while doing so save money based no. on all of the things you're currently paying for. So David, this is awesome, man. Uh, I'm glad but, that we got before to Before we go, this. I want to yeah. piggyback on that, that thought. I just hit, triggered. Um, I will have people when they're looking to, to sign up for free up, I will have them go through. I'm like, all right, write down all the things you're paying for in a monthly subscription or annual subscription, write it all down and then see what your cost is. And then send it to me and I'll tell you if free up can help you or not. Because then they'll start realizing I can take a lot of that stuff off their plate and they, they're paying three or four times more than what they need to be. And they're getting actually more value by going with three up. It's yeah. that, that alone, numbers to people, we know numbers, 3%, 6%. You know, we know those numbers really well. But if you see something like, wow, I'm actually putting more money in my pocket or I'm not wasting money, dude, game changer. Yeah, yeah, amen. David, it's been a pleasure. Always great Thank to you. connect. I hope uh, there are some uh, smart people out there that also connect with you and uh, look forward to uh, doing this again, man. This is a, a conversation I think needs to be uh, become a regular thing. I, I agree with you. I mean, how can we help? That's our job. Thanks. Take care, brother. You too. Have a good day. Lateral Agents Podcast.